Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This week's gonna be pretty exciting because we're going to uh, work on this. Now I know I don't normally start a video off with a fully formed droid head already. First time for everything, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the plan for this week is to work on this life-size General Grievous bust, which is, you know, just ahead right now. But there's like a pretty lengthy story with this model. I'm pretty sure that I have literally had the head pieces printed for over two years at this point. It's been some ridiculous amount of time and then I just never got around to finishing it. In fact, originally I wasn't going to make a full bust. I just kind of wanted the head to like display. But then last year I thought I was going to start working on it and I decided that I did in fact want the full bust situation and so I ended up printing more pieces like the main collar piece and stuff and then for whatever reason it did not continue working on it. I keep on seeing different ones made and they look so impressive and it looks like such a cool fun project to work on and so I just decided this is the week we're gonna do this thing and so that is the plan. Even with all like at this point like two years worth of 3D printing I still did not have anywhere close to the amount of pieces done. This thing is like in a million pieces. There are so many pipes to the thing which I decided to resin print all of them, I think. <laughs> I'm sure you will see in this video just how many pieces there are. It's quite insane. So clearly I have already done a bit of work, so I guess we will start with catching up to where I am at this point and then continue forward with hopefully actually getting this project finished this time. <laughs> Now because this was such a long drawn out project, I unfortunately have no footage of printing any of the original pieces other than a couple of pictures I took once I had all the supports cleaned up. So sorry if it seems like we're really just jumping into it. The main thing that I did was look at what pieces I'd already printed and figure out what I was missing and needed to still print. I started with the largest pieces that I knew were going to need the most work, mainly the head and collar pieces. Starting by roughly sanding them down to get rid of as many layer lines and imperfections as I possibly could before doing anything else. The collar pieces in particular I knew were going to need a lot of work. They had a lot of support material holding up the bottoms so it looked pretty messy. So the first thing I did with those after I sanded them was spread some of my favorite wood filler. It is this color changing stuff. It is the only type of wood filler that I will use now on a 3D print. It's just so much more plasticky than normal wood filler and I applied that onto the bottoms of the pieces using like a blank credit card and also my fingers just to get into any other smaller areas. And once that had dried, I sanded it down before applying a layer of filler primer. This is my pretty typical post-processing method, different fillers, sanding in between. I'm sure you know the general just at this point if you have ever tried to make a 3D print look smooth. The head was of course another very important piece that was going to involve a lot of work, including I added some UV resin onto some more problematic areas, anywhere that needed just that little extra help. And of course, more sanding. The sanding portion is just so condensed in this video, but I wanted to do as much smoothing to these pieces as I possibly could before deciding to assemble them and make them bigger and harder to manipulate. And once I felt I had gotten to that point, I did in fact decide to glue the pieces together. I used a pretty common adhesion method where you put E6000 in like the central core area, but then also a more faster setting super glue so that you don't have to wait and hold it for 20 years. The E6000 doesn't set very fast, but it tends to be a stronger bond in the end. So you will see me doing the double gluing on most of the larger pieces. On the smaller ones, you definitely can get away with just some super glue of your choosing, but anywhere that I knew was going to involve a lot of manipulation and sanding later got the double glue. At this point, I was also assembling some of the smaller pieces because I knew I was gonna have to do a lot of work on the seams and getting those nice and smoothed out and blended into the rest of the piece, which is exactly what I started on once I felt the glue had dried enough for me to go ahead and start manipulating some of the pieces again. I did decide to bust out the spot putty for some of the larger pieces just because it sands so beautifully, but I do know I used the wood filler on some other ones. Now, the head, even after multiple passes of spot putty and filler primer, still had quite a distinct line on it, so I decided to do a few rounds of my UV resin mixture 
character and that stuff completely made that line vanish. Like, I don't know if I've ever had a seam line disappear so flawlessly like this one did, especially because it was a pretty intense seam too. The final step for the collar and headpiece once I felt like I had it as smooth as I could possibly get it was to base prime it in the color that I felt would make a good base coat. So for these pieces, that was white. Now let's take a minute to actually talk about some of the other pieces that I was working on in between all of the head and collar chaos. First up being the base. Now I actually created that bottom sliver section to raise the base up because during one of my test fits, I realized that everything was just gonna sit a lot better if it had that bit of extra height. So of course, went ahead and got those two pieces glued together and then worked on that seam so it was a bit more smooth, although I knew this was gonna be pretty hidden, so I didn't worry too much about it being like a million percent perfect. And then of course, there were all of those pipes. Now, thankfully, because these were resin, their post-processing was pretty simple. Just get rid of the supports, clean them up, cure them, and then glue some of the pipes together that I printed in two separate pieces just for ease. I did also work on getting rid of any more prominent seams and support material holes. For some of these smaller pipes, I just used some UV resin mixture. And once I had all of that finished and everything smoothed out as much as I wanted, I then went ahead and primed them all in black. I decided to use a black primer that I use on a lot of my resin prints. It was just super easy to do in my studio and I didn't have to worry about using like a black rattle can primer. It's a pretty thin primer, so I also so didn't have to worry about it accidentally getting rid of any of those fine resin printed details. At this point, I've got all of the pieces finished, primed, and also with a base layer of paint on. So I did them all either black or white, depending on what they are. So anything that's gonna be that cream-ish color, so the head, the collar, the ears, I believe is all of the pieces that I painted white, that I will be airbrushing the more creamy beige color. I just couldn't find a rattle can that was like in a nice matte paint paint to do that. So airbrushing, not going to be a problem and I will have more control over the color that way as well. And then all of the pipes and base and everything else is in black because I'm not entirely sure what colors everything's going to end up being and black it tends to be what I base coat things in unless it is a super light color. I figured a lot of the pipes and stuff are probably going to have some degree of dry brushing and so having a black base is going to be what looks best for those. But yeah, it's time to start getting some actual paint on these pieces. Now, I wanted to spend the majority of this video talking about this paint job because the first thing that I noticed when I was looking for reference for the paint job is that there isn't actually that much. Surprisingly, not a lot of reference photos of Grievous, which is kind of weird. I had like two photos from the movie, but mostly I was using the life-size sideshow bust for reference because it was like the closest thing to what I was making. But even then, I feel like I did still have to do a bit of guesswork in the pipe colors and details and stuff, and so I really wanted to talk about that here. I also feel like I managed to dumb down this paint job into something incredibly manageable for most people. So if you're someone that's watching this video because you want to make a Grievous bust for yourself, hopefully this portion is helpful for you and still interesting for everyone else. So I did start by working on the head and collar, mostly because they were the pieces that I was the most concerned about. I knew they were going to take the longest amount of time for me to paint, and also because I knew I was going to have to do a lot more layers of paint. And the first thing that I, of course, started out with was that beige base coat. Now this I did pretty roughly. I tried to make sure everything was covered, but if there were some areas that were a little more translucent than others, I really didn't care. I also used a beige color that was a shade or two darker than I wanted the finished color to be, which you will see why in the next few steps. The next step for the head that I decided to do once that first layer had completely dried was give it almost a fake shading look to build up some nice dimension and shadows different areas. So this I did using a beige color that was another shade or two darker than the base coat. Of course, I'm using an airbrush, so the darkness of the color is kind of like a moot cause considering how much variation in translucency and control I have with the airbrush and just how much I thin down the paint. But it was, as you can probably see from me painting this, a fairly noticeably deeper tone. 
own. Although some areas that was, of course, it built up more in multiple layers with that airbrush so that it was more obvious. With the same color, I did also start to build up some of that veining texture, we're gonna call it. You will definitely want to look at reference photos of Grievous for this. I did freehand the whole thing, so didn't worry too much about the specifics. I tried to copy it as best as I could, but overall this is very much like a personal taste sort of a thing as to how much veining you want on your model. But I'm used to doing screen accurate, so that is what I was going for here. This is absolutely the step that you're going to want to take the most time with. I did a lot of different passes and layered up and did a lot of different texturing little tricks I tried to do just to try and give the veining a lot of different dimension. It's going to look insane, I'm gonna warn you right now, but we're going to fix it later and it's gonna look really cool. But I did try and do lots of different size veins and I went closer to the model and further away to really give it that look of the veins aren't completely on the same like plane. Some of them are a little set further back in, they're more translucent, they don't stick out as much. They're just not as dark and noticeable and there's also a variation in the size of the different veins. At this point, I was going back in and darkening up certain veins even more using literally like a burnt umber, a dark brown. This was not like a subtle thing. I really wanted some of these to pop. I needed them to be really deep and just build up more dimension. Of course, again, with the airbrush, you're dealing with a vast variety of translucency and opacity that you can build up. And it's a lot better and easier to gradually build up than to try and go back. So again, take your time with this. Using this color, I also decided to darken up the area around the eyes. I wanted the transition between the like flesh and the outer armor to be nice and smooth, although I did work on this a lot later. The next step is going to be to push all of these veins back into this cream color. And for this, I am using what I want the actual finished overall color to look like. So this is that shade or two lighter than the base coat. But again, the paint colors are all up to a personal preference. But using this color, I did varying degrees of covering up these veins. So I believe overall, almost the entirety of the head got at least a fine layer of this color. Some of the side pieces, maybe not as much, just to still keep that more shadowy look. The front face plate does seem to be somewhat lighter than the side panels and the references that I was looking at, but I also was using this to push back the veins more in certain sections than others. I used it to thin out the veins, just really essentially covering up more areas than others using this color, and that's helping push back those veins to make it look like they're more suspended in this plastic or metal or, you know, whatever is supposed to be going on here on Grievous. This is again another step you're going to want to take your time on because you don't want to eliminate the veins so, so much. You definitely still want there to be a hint of them. And the nice thing is, is the combination of the lighter cream color over that burnt umber, it grays out the brown. It kind of counteracts the warmth. And so you get something closer to more of a gray color color, which is what from my references I could tell is kind of the color that looks like it's going on in the vein department. And that's how to achieve the overall base texture of the head. There's of course quite a lot of work to still do on the head, but for now I'm going to flip it to working on the collar. Now I started off using that same dark burnt umber color and I shaded in the entirety of the upper base portion of the collar, like the inner base. I don't even know what on earth you want to call this. You can clearly see what I'm painting and I also decided to blend that up into the collar. Now the bottom portion is definitely darker. It's kind of hard to tell if it is a gradient into the edges or not, but that's what I decided to do. And still with that burnt umber color in my airbrush, I did the same veining technique on the outside of the collar. I did also turn it upside down and did a bit of veining 
shading and shading there as well so that it looked like it was all blended together and it's not like the bottom section of the collar was all of a sudden like pristinely clean and not textured compared to the upper section. This is again a process you want to take your time with, do multiple passes, do some wider, less opaque veins, go in and do some more fine ones that are deeper. The more variation and layering that you do, the more dimension that the collar will look like it has in the end. Before I went and started to bury the veins with the lighter cream color, I went back and deepened up the inner collar section with some black. It just seemed a little splotchy and also a bit light, so that's what I did there. But after that, I used the exact same paint and technique that I did on the head to push those veins back into the collar color, make them a bit less intense, and just overall give it that nice, interesting texture. After that, it was on to painting some of these details. I just did this using a paintbrush with some black paint while not breathing very much. No, but really, the nice thing is on this model, those details are recessed into the model, so you are essentially just painting where there is a bit of an engraving into the plastic, but you are using a significantly darker color here, so it is going to be something you want to take your time with. Be careful because it's going to be really hard to cover up that black if you accidentally slip. And I did the exact same thing for the lines on the head, and this was even somehow more nerve-wracking. At this point, the paint job on the collar was finished, so I flipped to doing all of the details on the head, starting with some more base coats. I added some black paint around the eyes, avoiding the overall iris area, just because black is so hard to cover up. I also did a black base coat on any of the other portions of the head that were going to become metal. So the ear cuffs, as well as the bottom point of the head. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Once the black base coat had dried, I went in with honestly probably my favorite paint of all time. It is this folk art brushed black, and it is this really smooth, dark gunmetal metallic color, and it is perfect as almost like a metallic base coat. When you want to build up dimension, which is what I'm doing here, I added some acrylic ink in a lighter silver color on the high points and then went in with a matte, like a normal plain black color into the darker recesses of these ear details. Here you can hopefully see the difference between the plain metallic and then the side that has the added dimension. It's a pretty easy step and I just feel like it makes the metallics look so much more realistic. Next up is the flesh area around the eye. Now this, I would not necessarily say I dry brushed on this like dark burgundy-ish color. It was more like I was quite literally slapping paint on, but really here I didn't really want to try and make it too complicated. The area is quite textured and so just hitting the highest points with more layers of paint to build up a more intense color and have it be lighter is really all it needed. I did go in with slightly lighter colors as well to really make the most prominent points highlighted and stand out more to give it that nice dimension. But then it was on to the actual eyes, and again, I tried to dumb down this process for myself as much as I possibly could. I started with this like a mustardy yellow color that I painted the entire eyeball area in. And on top of that, I did a bit of a gradient, did a darker brown on the upper section and a lighter yellow on the lower to give it some more dimension and life. And then I also went around the edges with the green to create like the edge of the eye. Now, something I did not film because it was a wild experiment is that I actually filled in the eye portion with UV resin, not the printer kind, like the kind you use for jewelry, because I really wanted to make those eyes look incredibly lifelike and I also knew I wanted to add a gloss to the fleshy area around the eye and I wanted it to stand out from each other so it didn't look like it was all the same type of material. There have been some additions made to Grievous' head since the last time I showed it, but I spent most of last night freaking out over putting these ears, fins, ear fins, <laughs> whatever you want to call these pieces on, because I realized, according to the vague directions, you're actually supposed to, like, 
put the two pieces together when you're putting the ear poles on it's just it's very messy and even though I was freaking out I think the way that I did it is probably the better way to do it so even though I've already completed it I wanted to talk about what I did first thing the ear poles which I haven't painted yet they're still resin printed the worst fitting pieces I've I think ever had on a 3d print so when you print those you might want to like shrink them down because it literally took me probably like an hour and a half to sand those down to get them to fit in so what I did was slip this pole on into the head once I got it to fit also put this pole in while still having a bit sticking out slid the ear fin into this pole and for this one I like had it sticking out enough that I could like snap like the good thing is the resin's a bit flexible so nothing was breaking uh, but I pulled this portion around so it would like just fit into this pole but then I also with some pliers actually grabbed the pole and pushed it into this uh, like the hole on the actual fin portion and then I tried to very discreetly super glue that all into place just to leave it there so even though that's a bit of a like a circus act I feel like that's probably the better way to do it because then you can really get the fins nice and smooth. So touch-ups and everything I will still be doing, but yeah, I just wanted to get those blasted fins on, which I have done. So now I'm probably just going to paint the poles, which, you know, not exciting and I'm probably gonna have my head in the way the whole time, so I'm not gonna film that. They're just gonna get colored the same uh, beige color that the rest of the head is. Also clearly got both of the eyes UV resined. I'm still probably going to add gloss around the like fleshy area but I might do that like once the head is actually attached to the rest of the body. We'll see. Yeah that's the head update. Now time to move on to the far more simple painting the pipes. Although simple in technique and not necessarily in knowing what color to do them because as I mentioned there's like non-existent reference and it's also incredibly difficult to figure out what on earth is going on in all of the neck business. So I feel like I did manage to figure it out, thankfully after staring for multiple hours at way too many pictures. But first off, the neck pistons and the largest pipes on the side, I started with a base coat of that brushed black metallic paint. But other than that, it's really just a lot of dry brushing to bring out the highest points on these pipes so that you can really see and appreciate all of the detail. I went with a bit of a brighter silver on the higher points on these main side pipes. These really long, tightly coiled pipes I did in a bronze color. I mixed up a bronze with a copper and also a metallic red because it looked like a really warm toned bronze coppery shade. And for all of my dry brushing, I'm using my favorite old ratty oil painting brush that is absolutely perfect for pulling out all of this detail. This smaller double pipe I did in a bronze, although this was a straight bronze paint. I went back to the neck pistons and added a pretty bright silver onto these back wires. I also added a bit of dry brushing and highlighting to the rest of this piece as well. The large double pipe I also did in a pretty bright silver. From what I could tell, other than the pipes that I already showed off that were various bronze colors, the rest appear to be silver, just in varying strengths and brightnesses. Now as for the actual neck piece, the upper portion is metal. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to guess based on how this model is like separated, that's where I ended the metallic look with of course my favorite brushed black. But the rest is that fleshy reddish burgundy color that is the same color as around the eye. So again, did that really quick paint slapping, dry brushing, pull out the highlighted points. It's pretty hard to see. It is definitely red and fleshy-ish and I would assume that it's probably supposed to be the same biomechanical material or whatever you'd want to call it as around the eyes. Because of that it meant that I also added a gloss varnish to the fleshy part of the neck piece. 
The base, however, giant guess. I could see in one photo that the upper part of the collar neck joint thing, I have no clue what you want to call this. It was definitely like a silver color, but other than that, I just added some dry brushing of that brushed black just to bring out some of the details so it didn't look so flat. As for the base pipes, they did look to be a different texture to everything else. They look significantly glossier, so that is what I painted them in. And with that, all of these pieces are finally painted and it's time to start assembling this crazy thing. And there's definitely a good order of events to do this in. So first up, main collar on the base. Next were the base pipes, which I did separate myself. Normally they are attached to the base, but I knew these weren't gonna fit great. So I ended up using some hot glue so that it would set faster. But ultimately there was quite a large gap on the base portion. I preferred that they looked good in the front and I was going to fix the holes in the back. And for that, I just used some green stuff to fill that in, make it look nice and in one piece. And I of course painted that one once it had set. But back to assembling, next up are these large double pipes, we're going to call them. They attach both to the central console as well as the base. Then I did the small double pipes, which also attach to the central console and base. The actual neck, you need to slip through the neck piston piece before even attempting to get it on this thing. Although even then I still broke off the back pipes. So maybe don't even bother trying to glue those before trying to do this. Especially because you have this back triangle part that attaches to the back of the neck and the back of the collar. And you normally have even more wires going in and around those. Next, I did the small central neck pipes, the ones that are on the lower portion of the neck piece on either side. Again, they attach to the base as well as the side of the neck. Then we had the larger neck pipes that go on the large hole on the side of the neck and to the base. And the last of the pipes are these long brass ones that go from the central console all the way to the back of the collar. And last but not least, actually attaching the head. This is also the point where I did any minor touch-ups necessary from me messing things up during the assembly process, if that was something, or just generally areas where you might notice need a little extra paint. And the last bit of painting that I decided to do was really making some of these lines and veins more pronounced, especially areas where it's almost more of a crack as opposed to a recessed vein underneath the metal. For these scratches above the eye, I actually went in with some sharp tweezers and scraped some of the paint off to actually give it a scratch. Overall, I was just going in very carefully with some paint and detailing it up to my preferred look. And the actual last final step was varnishing this model. I covered the eyes because I didn't want the spray to mess up the effect that I achieved there. But with that, we have a fully finished life-size General Grievous bust. I'm really happy with how he turned out and I hope you enjoyed seeing the process. But that is everything, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.